Office with the Governor's Executive Orders N2520, N25, I'm sorry, N2520 and N2920, and the Brown Act. Members of the public have been invited to join this meeting via telephone conference line on the notice of the agenda. Members of the public who wish to access this board meeting may do so by calling a conference telephone line. That number is 213-838-8477. That's 213-838-8477. If you'd like to join in English after dialing that number, use the meeting ID 949-7068-3735. If you're joining in Spanish, it's the same phone number using meeting ID 954-3978-2569. We welcome public access, and if any members of the public would like to provide public comment at this board meeting, please send your comments in writing to board meeting public comments at accelerated.org. This is one word, board meeting public comments, that's plural, board meeting public comments at accelerated.org, prior to or joining our meeting. In your email, please include if you are speaking on a non-agenda or a specific agenda item. Comments submitted by email will be read aloud during the board meeting for up to three minutes. Please bear in mind that there are young students and children that may be listening to your emails. If comments are in Spanish or another language, they will be translated to English. A reminder to the public that when submitting emails, you may, but are not required to provide us your name. Comments that have already been submitted will be read aloud. There's no need to resubmit your comments. Any comments that are submitted late, that is after the agenda item has been voted on, will not be read. A note to those listening on the phone line today, the phones are muted. That's why we provide an email address for public comment. When we go into a closed session, the conference call will be muted and then unmuted when we finish with our closed session. Let's call this meeting to order and I will be, I will ask that a roll be taken. Board Secretary, please do a roll call. Thank you, Board President. Board President Leonard Rabinowitz. Present. Board Vice President Peter Morrison. Here. Board member Elizabeth Espinosa. Not here. Board member Larry Pikes. Here. Board member John Ward. Here. Board member Elizabeth Weiss. Here. Board member Scott Yetter. Here. And board member Binti Yost. Uh, may the record show we have a quorum of the board participating via internet. Thank you so very much. May there, yes, may the record show we have a quorum of the board participating via internet. Today's board agenda will need to be shuffled around a bit due to board member schedules. We'll, we will be taking certain items out of order to ensure we have a full quorum for all action items and the public hearing. Today, let's begin with the approval of special board meeting minutes from the June 9th, 2020 meeting, followed by the public hearing for LCAP operations and a written report pursuant to Executive Order N56-20. Then we will have the consent items for board approval. Then we will go into closed session to discuss the items listed on the agenda. When reconvening to open session, we will report out any action taken. And next, we will take up the agenda item ratification 2020-21 side letter agreement with UTLA. Following those items, we will hear public comments on non-agenda items. And then as time permits, the board president's comments and report the CEO's report and staff presentations and reports prior to adjournment. And Wayne, I believe you have a comment. Uh, at this time, uh, I, I don't, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we will, when we get to the public comment uh, period for non-agenda items, uh, I will uh, have a couple things to say at that point. But I'll go ahead and let you go forward with the board meeting. Uh, Much approval of board minutes. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, so we're moving on to the approval of the board meeting uh, from June 9th, twenty twenty. 
do we need a motion to approve those me uh minutes please thank you elizabeth second i second peter thank you all those in favor aye 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 may the record show we have a unanimous approval of the board minutes mr chairman yes so, sorry to interrupt but uh with uh, telephonic or teleconference meetings, it does have to be roll call for every vote, unfortunately. Okay. Can we go ahead and do that? I will do roll call. Um, Board President Leonard Rabinowitz, how do you vote? Aye. Board Vice President Peter Morrison, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Larry Pikus, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member John Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Elizabeth Weiss, how do you vote? Is Elizabeth Elizabeth, you're on mute, Elizabeth. She's muted. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Board Member Scott Yetter, how do you vote? Aye. And I believe Ms. Espinosa has joined us. Ms. Espinosa, are you able to speak on the phone? Sorry, we can't hear you, Ms. Espinosa, but we see that you're on. Okay. Lenita, I take it we have unanimous approval? By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. Okay. Uh, next up is the public hearing for LCAP operations written report pursuant to executive order N56-20. Do we have any public comments via email regarding that item? There are no public comments regarding this particular agenda item. Uh, we need to have board approval for that. Do I hear a motion to approve? Can we have a roll call vote from the board secretary? Do, do we not need a motion and second before the roll call? You do. Is this, is this is the uh, LCAP uh, written report? then you would need to have uh, a, a motion, a second, and a vote. Okay, so may I have a motion? So okay. moved. Peter? Second. second. Larry, second. And if we can have a roll call, Lenita? Board President Leonard Robinowitz, how do you vote? Aye. Board Vice President Peter Morrison, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Elizabeth Espinosa, can we hear you yet? <laughs> Okay, board member Larry Pike is, how do you vote? Aye. Board member John Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Board member Elizabeth Weiss, how do you vote? Aye. Board member Scott Yetter, how do you vote? Aye. And by unanimous vote, this item has been approved. Okay, thank you. Number two, the financials for 10 months ending April 30th. Uh, the uh, financials are not um, available for today's meeting uh, because uh, we had discussed this in the finance committee. Okay, so we're going to move on from that? Yes. Okay. Uh, number three, the fiscal year 2021 budget for ACES, TASWAS, and the Home Office. Vincent? Uh, yes, we had a discussion at the finance committee. We made um, a couple of adjustments um, and uh, the finance committee um, recommends to the board for approval for the 2020-21 school year. And has everyone seen the uh, proposed budget and is comfortable for motions and voting at this time? Any comments? Okay, hearing none. Uh, may I have a motion to approve those uh, projected budgets for the upcoming year? So move. Second. Second. Okay, roll call. Uh, Board President Leonard, Robin Leonard Robinowitz, how do you vote? Aye. Board, Pre Board Vice President Peter Morrison, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Larry Pikus, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member John Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Board member Elizabeth Weiss, how do you vote? Aye. Board member Scott Yetter, how do you vote? Aye. 
and Elizabeth Espinosa. Don't know. Uh, by unanimous vote, this item has been approved. Okay. Um, and item four, the fiscal year 2021 education protection account spending plans for ACES, TAS, and WAS. Do I have a motion for approval? Anyone? So move. Thank you, Larry. Second by someone? Second. Thank you, Scott. Roll call. For President Leonard Rabinowitz, how do you vote? Aye. For President, Board Vice President Peter Morrison, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Elizabeth Espinosa, how do you vote? Board Member Larry Pikus, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member John Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Elizabeth Weiss, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Scott Yetter, how do you vote? Aye. By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. Thank you so very much. Item five for fiscal year 2021, the ex-ed service agreement. Motion to approve, please. So move. Thank you, Larry. Second. Thank you, Scott. Roll call. Board President Leonard Rabinowitz, how do you vote? Aye. Board Vice President and Peter Morrison, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, board member Larry Pikus, how do you vote? Aye. Board member John Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Board member Elizabeth Weiss, how do you vote? Aye. Board member Scott Yetter, how do you vote? Aye. And Elizabeth Espinosa. Aye. Oh, yes, I'm here now. There you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, By unanimous vote. This item has been approved. Thank you so very much. Item six, fiscal year 2021, the ex ed CalPads agreement. Calling for a motion to approve. So move. Thank you, Larry. Second, please. Second. Thank you, John. Uh, roll call. Board President Leonard Rabinowitz, how do you Aye. vote? <laughs> Board <laughs> Vice President Peter Morrison, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Elizabeth Espinosa, how do you vote? Aye. Board Pre Member Larry Pikus, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member John Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Board Member Elizabeth Weiss, how do you vote? Aye. And Board Member Scott Yetter, how do you vote? Aye. By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. Okay, moving to number seven, the board meeting dates for 2021. Motion to approve. So move. Larry, thank you. Of course. Second. Peter, second. Roll call. Board President Leonard Rabinowitz. How do Aye. you vote? <laughs> Board Vice President. Aye. <laughs> Elizabeth Espinosa. Aye. Larry Pikus. Aye. John Ward. Aye. Elizabeth Weiss. Aye. Scott Yetter. Aye. By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. <laughs> thank you so much. And number eight, two more. Number eight, number nine, number eight, the academic calendar for 2021. Motion to approve, please. So move. Thank you, Larry. Second. Thank you, Scott. Roll call. Leonard Rabinowitz. Aye. Peter Morrison. Sorry, I'm on mute. Aye. Elizabeth Espinosa. Aye. Larry Pikus. Aye. John Ward. Aye. Elizabeth Weiss. Aye. And Scott Yetter. Aye. By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. And finally, number nine, the LCAP federal addendum for ACES, TAS, and WAS. A motion to approve, please. The move. So move. Uh, we have Scott uh, moved and second by Larry. Okay, that works for me. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Leonard Rabinowitz. Aye. Peter Morrison. Aye. Elizabeth Espinosa. Aye. Larry Pikus. Aye. John Ward. Aye. Elizabeth Weiss. Aye. Scott Yetter. Aye. Thank you all so much. By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. 
thank you so very much. And as we prepare to adjourn into closed session, are there any public comments that we've received via email regarding this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to make one quick note that the items one through nine that uh, you just voted on, except for number two, uh, there were no public comments for any of those uh, items, nor was there any public comment for the LCAP uh, operations written report. Um, there all also is no public comments uh, regarding closed session items. Thank you so very much. We can now move into closed session. Would Kang kindly confirm that the uh, outside calls have been muted? Uh, give me a second. You've got it.
English channel is open and the Spanish channel is open. Thank you so very much and welcome back members of the public. Let the minutes reflect that the Board of Trustees has resumed open session at 10.35 a.m. and that no action was taken during closed session. The next item will be ratification of the 2021 side letter agreement with UTLA. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, do I have a motion to approve? Do we? Do we? Do we have any written, do we have any public comments about this? I'm sorry. We do not. Thank you so very much. Do I have a motion to approve? Thank you, Scott. Second. 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 Okay. Roll call, please. Leonard Rabinowitz. Aye. Peter Morrison. Aye. Elizabeth Espinosa. Aye. Larry Pikes. Aye. John Ward. Aye. Elizabeth Weiss. Aye. And Scott Yetter. Aye. By unanimous vote, this item has been approved. Thank you so very much. And next we have the ratification of the 2021 side letter agreement with UTLA. Any public comments? Is that what we just voted on? Thank you very much. My notes are, are back with you. I'm so sorry. The next item then is the LCAP operations written report. Do you have any public comments regarding that? Um, Board President, uh, sorry for the changes. We already approved the I LCAP. I thought so, okay. So now we're ready for public comments on non-agenda items. Then. There we go, thank you. All right, uh, this is Wayne Strong for Legal Counsel for the Accelerated Schools. There are uh, seven public comments of non-agenda items. Uh, uh, six of them uh, I will read. Uh, uh, before Lenita reads the seventh one, uh, I would like to advise members of the public who are listening that the following emails contain what some may consider to be inappropriate and or vulgar language and may not be suitable for children or certain members of the public. We apologize in advance. However, we are going to read the public comment under the Brown Act. So this is legal counsel for the accelerated schools. I am reading uh, comment number one from Mike Hawk. To the racist pieces of shit board members of these charter schools. I ran across you on YouTube treating your employees, parents, and people in the community like criminals or speaking out and protecting their community. Racists like you are the ones that give us decent white people a bad rap. You are part of the problem in today's society because you talk down to the people in the community as if you have any clue what they are going through. I saw a white pastor board member telling black and brown people in the audience during the board meeting that he is part of the community and he can relate to them. Fuck him and all of you assholes that think for a second that you can fucking to relate to any of them. You are all some white privileged fuckers that don't seem to understand nor grasp the fact that you are all racist and offensive when you say this type of crap to people when none of you live in their neighborhood. In closing, go fuck yourself. Email number two, and again, uh, this is legal counsel for the Accelerated Schools reading this. The public comment is from Dick Payne. My name is Dick Payne. I have a quote from John F. Kennedy that I want to share with these racist pieces of shit assholes that serve on the corrupt charter school board. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. Be prepared for the revolution that's headed to your houses. You dare invade that community with no regard for their needs and demands, then you should feel their pain. It's not going to be pretty in your safe neighborhood when they start going to your houses to demand to be heard. If you haven't learned anything from the recent civil unrest taking place around the USA and in other countries, I suggest you take a hard look at what you racist assholes have been doing because it seems like those parents 
and community are tired of white privilege racist people like you oppressing them i think you i think they have had enough and it's time for these board members to fill the roar of a revolution at their doorsteps demanding respect if any of those parents and community members that have issues with these assholes and you're listening you can email me at edick6418 at gmail.com I am willing to help arrange a protest house visit for each of these racist board members' houses. Again, this is legal counsel for the Accelerated Schools. I am now going to read the third email. It's from Anita P. Ness. I say my comments as written, do not fucking alter shit. My name is Anita P. Ness. I am a member of the CD9 community and have witnessed your disgusting racist attitude and actions toward members of my community. You have been using my hard earned taxes to hire armed security guards to intimidate respectable members of our community that include the same parents that you are supposed to educate their children. You racists seem us black and brown folks like savages and find any excuse to threaten our safety with guns and brutality. Fucking racist assholes. I heard several times that you keep saying that you fucking donated the damn property and that you are volunteering your fucking time without pay. People that do this from the kindness of their heart don't expect shit in return and don't throw it in people's faces over and over again like you racist, white racist fucker. You're not our fucking white savior, so save your lip service for someone who gives a fuck about what you have to say. Uh, she does have a, a, a apologize here. There is a note, closed session comment item number three. She's commenting, the same person's commenting on that, whoever this person is. I checked your website. Who the fuck is the person and why are they wasting my money on this damn position? How much are they, are you paying this person when no one knows who the fuck this is and what they are doing? This is some damn bullshit wasting our fucking money to pay for this type of shit. Public comment, email number four. Again, um, uh, I'm legal counsel for the Accelerated Schools reading this. This is from Defenders of Public Schools. All charter school board members such as these are slimy, slithering snakes that are destroying communities. They are white savior privateers that do not serve all students, especially ones with disabilities. Your psychopathic read, head real estate grifter, white supremacist board president, Leonard Rabinovitz, wants to eliminate special education at your publicly funded charter schools. He is an arrogant piece of shit, does not know what the fuck he is doing, and does not care about any children in that neighborhood. He serves only on that board to protect his real estate investments, not because he gives two bucks about that community and those kids. This is why he threatened to close all the charter schools when he pissed off at those protesting teachers during their contract negotiation. He thrives on threatening and oppressing people in need. He uses the students of that community as a commodity and believes they need him to serve as his white savior. The fifth email, again, this is uh, legal counsel for the Accelerated Schools reading this email. It's from Ben N. Sider. This is Ben N. Sider just dropping by to tell these racist fuckers of this corrupt charter school board to screw yourselves and stop being such assholes. These motherfuckers are some damn poverty pimps. Pimping out that community for your own interest, you aren't doing anything for the community but looting it. Fuck you racist poverty pimps. <clears throat> Finally, there is one more uh, comment, and this is in Spanish. I will translate it into English. <clears throat> and again, this is I'm legal counsel for the Accelerated Schools reading it. It is from Dorothy Franklin, and in English it reads, Blow is another public, no, I'm sorry. Dear board members, I ask that you quit your jobs. Just leave and go back to the Pacific Palisade. I yield my time, fuck you. Those are six emails, I believe. Uh, there is one additional public comment. Yes, there is one additional public comment from Hilda Rodriguez Guzman that I will read right now. Dear TAS Board of Trustees, I am highly upset that I wasn't notified as previously requested several times to be provided with all board 
board and committee meeting agendas and board packet documents. This week on Tuesday, June 16th, a TAS finance committee meeting was held in which I wasn't emailed the meeting agenda and documents that were reviewed and discussed by the committee members during the meeting as requested in writing several times. Additionally, when I discovered this committee meeting was taking place, I attempted to log into the Zoom Finance Committee meeting, but the agenda I obtained online didn't contain the password in order to see or hear the meeting. I had to email and request the password, which is ridiculous. As a result, this caused me and others the inability to attend via phone or computer and to participate in the meeting, in the committee meeting, because we had no idea what the committee would be discussing discussing given that the public wasn't given any information in a timely manner. The board also isn't transparent with the public as it fails to upload on its website all of the documents that are discussed and reviewed during the board and committee meetings on the school website. This board needs to be transparent with the public and inform us that you are using Zoom to conduct your meeting and provide us with the correct meeting information. If the expectation is for students like my second grade grandson to use Zoom for distance learning, I don't understand why this board is unable to provide the public with all of the Zoom meeting information. I'm sure if my second grade grandson can manage Zoom, so can this board. Kindly, Hilda Rodriguez Guzman. And that is the last public comment. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Wayne Strumper again, uh, your Chief Legal Counsel. I just want to comment on that comment briefly to mention that uh, the, the, the writer of that email uh, has made a request under Government Code 54954.1 to receive copies of agendas and documents for the agenda packet. That uh, section of the law only pertains to board uh, board meetings, not committee meetings. Uh, and then just briefly, at the Finance Committee meeting on Tuesday, the password for accessing the meeting online was inadvertently left off the agenda. However, the public was provided an email address for comment, and uh, Hilda used that uh, email address along with other members of the public uh, to ask for the password. They were given the password, and they were able to access the meeting. Thank you so very much, Wayne. Is that it? Yes, that concludes public comments. Thank you. Um, I prepared a note before I heard today's uh, comments from the public, and I'd like to read it. Um, I decided to become heavily involved in the accelerated schools at the event of the 1992 riots, knowing that education would be the element of change for the surrounding black community. That dream slipped away somewhat as the demographics in our neighborhood have changed since then. We serve a great community of parents and students, but upon reflection, I do believe we should attempt to be more diverse, especially starting in the younger grades. To that end, I have had two discussions with CEO Grace Chang. One, we both agree that in the upcoming school year, it would be nice to have a Great American Heroes Week concentrated on non-political, non-sports Black Americans and another on our Latino Americans who have become successful and received acclaim through their education and subsequent contributions. An example of someone I'm speaking of would be the great architect Paul Williams. Mr. Williams was born in Los Angeles in 1894 and early on lost both of his parents. Eventually he was adopted and found himself as the only white African, as the only African man, I'm sorry, as the only African American student in an all white elementary school. He studied and worked hard and became the only African American architect west of the Mississippi. He was the first African American architect admitted to the AIA. He designed numerous award winning buildings. During the war, he designed for the Navy and United States Navy, and thereafter 2,000 homes for numerous stars like Frank Sinatra and Danny Thomas. His coveted homes still stand and go for premium dollars, including the $80 million home called currently for sale in Bel Air, designed by Mr. Williams. Notably, his accomplishments were built on an educational foundation, which is what this accelerated school stands for. There's a great story to tell. Uh, with regard to Mr. Williams, there's a super documentary about him available for streaming on PBS. And these are the kind of people that we'd like for both of these initiatives if we go into next year. 
underscoring how education can change the lives. Two, I've asked Jonathan Williams to reach out to the nearby black communities in an attempt to recruit students. This is difficult as there is a distance, but we did kick around some ideas uh, and he's going to work on that to see if we can add diversity back to the student mix. Now I wanna underscore that our current constituency is the local Hispanic community and none of the comp contemplated initiatives will take resources away from that. In fact, the upcoming year, and at a time when many public and charter schools are planning programming and staffing cuts, PAS is, intends to move forward with additional programs to serve our students. The board thinks the entire staff of, uh, thanks the entire staff of PAS for the diligent work during this pandemic and also our many donors who over the years have provided a reserve creating income we can now draw upon to cover what may be reduced public funding. And it, Again, and this is now uh, not pre-prepared, but in listening to the comments today um, and in speaking with uh, the financial experts that provide for financial advice to many, many charter schools and have your finger on the pulse of charter and public schools, there are the, the proposed budget for next year, and I'm doing this from memory, uh, calls for about a two and a half million dollar uh, input from our reserves, which were provided by donors. If, in fact, I see Vincent is shaking his head that I have that correct. Thank you. So, if it wasn't for the people that sit on this board, their predecessors, and the reserves from the private sector, the accelerated school would be looking at a two and a half million dollar budget cut in order to stay solvent. And that would mean reducing things like special edu educational needs and staff and the programs that we are planning to put in place to improve our outcomes. It is this board, the board's predecessor and our private sector working together with the public that makes Accelerated School great and that's going to make it greater in the future. Um, I take offense to what was said. We are here putting our hands in our pockets to help make the school better. I want to say that at no time have I ever discussed eliminating services for special need children. The discussion has always been how to make them better, and that was a big part of our budget for next year. Also, I have no real estate interest in downtown Los Angeles. I wish I did. I don't. So my only pur purpose of being here is so that we can produce more success stories like Mr. Williams. Uh, I gotta lend my comments and uh, we move on to staff presentations. That sound correct? Okay. It is, are we now? Oh, uh, okay, COVID-19 updates. Who's going to check, report on this? We're uh, members of the board. We wanted to provide you a brief update on where we are with COVID-19 updates for the school and also school reentry. First, the board took action last year on adopting two very important goals for our organization. And during distance learning, we have not moved away from accelerating learning and also communication. So our learning plan, <clears throat> really had our goal of learning, but how do we do it distantly? And we divided that into four different goals. We completed our fourth phase, which is uh, making sure all of our students have access to synchronous and asynchronous learning. And we were also innovating at that last stage right before we ended. And you are looking at the percentage of student and teacher engagement during distance learning, which I will share with you later on as well. The second goal was also to, uh, at a time like this, it's so much more important to strengthen our communication. So we continue with communication, internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. Um, internal stakeholders, we focused on these three levels, the organizational level, the school level, and the grade and department level. So you can see the different ways that we've been communicating at these three levels. We also focused with our external stakeholders too. 
um, at those three levels. External stakeholders like our parents have been getting communication at the organizational level on all of these different areas, A through E. And we also set up a general helpline number for them to contact us because we are not on site. And that helpline number provides them access to many different resources once they dial in, then at the school level and the teacher level as well. One also note that we wanted to share with you and make public is that we um, have a statement on our peaceful protest that the Accelerated School stands in support of those in our community who are peacefully making their voices heard. And we advocate for ending all forms of bigotry, injustice, and violence. And that the Accelerated Schools opened its doors like the president just shared in the wake of the LA riots and that we are guided by our belief of students of all color deserving high quality education. We also started a GoFundMe page for just our TAS families. As we're communicating with our parents, there's about 45 families who are struggling for food access. So right now we have a GoFundMe page that the administrator started in uh, donating and contributing individually. And we are sharing that to distribute meals every Friday to these 45 families, especially during the summertime when students may not have access to food. And the last part of our stakeholder engagement is going to be tapping into our parents and our faculty on what school re-entry is going to look like. So our parents, if they haven't already, is right now are getting surveys on what best form of school re-entry would suit them and their students. And our faculty is completing it at this time as well. We're looking at three different choices. Um, one is to continue with distance learning completely like we are now for next year. The second is to return on site for learning, which does not look viable at this point given where we are with our health pandemic. And then the third we're looking at very aggressively is which hybrid option would be best if we have a hybrid of distance and online learning. Um, we're looking at half day morning, half day afternoon. We're looking at a Tuesday, Wednesday for one group of students, a Thursday, Friday option for another. And then we're also looking at alternating weeks for different students so that a group of students may be coming one week and another group coming another week. And I'm happy to report that right now, as of now, the stakeholders are leaning towards option B, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wanted to let the board know that we are actively soliciting stakeholders for their voices in this decision-making process. Uh, board member Rabinowitz shared that we are here with private scholarships for students and making sure um, they get the quality education to continue after TAS. And here is Rodrigo Calix. So he was our Wallace Hannenberg Scholarship winner this year in the amount of $10,000. Uh, his grades were in the top 10. And we selected him because he's a leader, academic leader, and also an athlete. He was a team captain for four years. He volunteers before and after school to help out others. And adults and students so enjoy his presence and just um, how he makes them into a better person. He's going to continue in to CSU Long Beach for Pomona. And he was our Wallace Annenberg Scholarship winner this year. Are, these are the many events that we did virtually to end the year, and we wanted to share with the board uh, a thanks for their commitment. Hope you're enjoying some of the pictures, the online graduation, the virtual things that I was sending with you via email um, to help us end the year. And that concludes CEO's report. Hey, Grace, thanks for that. and. Um you know, for all of the, the invitations and photos from the graduations and milestones, um, you know, wonderful work in continuing to press forward during these, these trying times. Um, as we start to think about the fall, you said that the full return to campus, you know, isn't really viable. Um, is the hybrid viable currently? And then do we have contingencies, uh, assuming, you know, a student were to be sick um, as to how we identify and, and, and address those issues with the other people in the class, et cetera? 
hybrid looks more viable and that's something that we've been asked to plan for in terms of make sure you're ready, but not necessarily given the green light. Um, Got it. it will also depend on LAUSD as well because we're under the umbrella of their charter, vic the vicinity. So when they open is when we are reopening and we're, re we're planning for reopening. Um, okay. Yes, some of the logistical things we have not fully thought about yet. However, that continues to be a main concern is how do we monitor the health of our staff and our employees and our students when they're on campus, given uh, the restraints that we have. And as a larger Los Angeles community, they are working with educational leaders all together to secure things like PPEs and talk about the scheduling. Um, but right now, the crux of our focus has been um, engaging our stakeholders and asking them, um, how, do you, how do you feel safe coming back? Uh, what, what option do you think would be viable if we have to come back? Do you have any underlying symptoms and health conditions that prevent you from coming back? So that if we are given the green light, that we can be ready as much as possible. And we'd love also any input from our other board members who are involved in re-entry in their organizations, if they have any wisdom for us or what the timing looks like for them. Yeah, um, I know the situation is fluid and, and again, appreciate you guys being thoughtful around it. You know, from the Wells Fargo perspective, it's, it's, uh, it's very much a work in process. Um, we've been told that the earliest we would likely return would be October. Um, we would then do some sort of hybrid rotation as you're contemplating, you know, through the balance of the year with the hope to be a return to normal, whatever that new normal looks like in early 2021. Um, but again, it's fluid. Uh, I, I think we're trying to think about, um, and I'm sure there are things you guys have considered, um, you know, having a defined pathway through floors, right? It's kind of a one-way flow to minimize interaction. Um, obviously having seats um, set up such that you are appropriately six feet apart to provide distancing. It's, you know, enhanced cleaning, which I can get some more color on, and, and Tom may be, you know, apprised of already, but it's like an electrostatic spray that can get into crevices and do things to allow you to, you know, deep clean more quickly and, you know, more, more uh, regularly. So a number of different things are being, I see the, th the thumbs up from Tom, you know, a number of different things are being considered, but, you know, it, it is fluid. And I think you're doing the right thing in engaging the constituents because, you know, as I understand it, um, we, we haven't gotten there yet at Wells Fargo, but, I've got about 15 people on my team. Some have got, you know, pre-existing conditions and, you know, having one-off conversations, there's a lot of, you know, concern about how much flexibility we will provide, right? So while some segment of the population probably says, you know, my student uh, learns best, you know, in the physical environment as opposed to virtually, you know, there's another set that says, hey, given our health circumstances, we need the virtual option, right? So I think understanding those preferences and, and, and planning appropriately, which the hybrid allows us to do, I think is, is the appropriate approach, thoughtful approach. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, we have staff presentation reports, Grace. We do not, um, due to the shortness in time, we condensed it all under the CEO's report and staff presentation reports we do not have. So are we complete then? We can adjourn? We can. Are there any other items that the board members would like to discuss more that was on our agenda today? Or any other direction that the board would like to provide us in terms of re-entry? Hear none. Hearing none, perhaps we get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Peter, so moved. Seconded by? Second. Very much appreciate everyone today for being here and getting through the issues swiftly. Thank you so very much. Sorry for some of the comments we heard. I, I think that 
the comments don't have a full understanding of how hard we work and what we do and how genuine we are. Uh, having a motion and do we do we need to have a roll call to adjourn or can we just call it? We kind of do. Yeah. Okay, then we'll do that. And before we do, I just want to say for those people in the public and for our board members listening, uh, it's a little awkward working through this as we learn how to do this through Zoom. And I apologize for that. So, Renita, may we have a roll call on the motion to adjourn? I'm not hearing you, but I believe you called me. Senator Rabinowitz. Yes. Hi. Peter uh, Aye. Elizabeth Espinosa. Aye. Larry Pikes. Aye. John Ward. Aye. Elizabeth Weiss. Aye. And Scott Yetter. Aye. Let the record show the meeting can be adjourned. Okay, this meeting, I'm sorry. At 1105 a.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.